Sup guys, Hicken here bringing you another manga review on this week's uh, Black Clover chapter 321, Excuses. So yeah, that's a bit weird, I swear I just did the uh, recent chapter like the other day and now we got a new one? Okay, uh, we need to figure out when these chapters come out so I can actually do it on the next day, you know? But uh, yeah, read this week's chapter and... It's pretty, it's pretty slow paced, uh, it, it, it's more set up if you will, but it's pretty good, a lot of characters get their moments aside, a bit of character development here, mostly better on the Seke of all people, like, like, okay, cool, I like his character, I mean, I think he's, I think he's decent, he gets a lot of development here, I think, so hopefully that will result in something happening in the future for him, but yeah, let's just go into this then, so, um, we, 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 we start the chapter with him basically having this sort of crisis of doubt with Seke basically. He's, he's not been involved in the fight at all. I don't think we've seen him do anything useful since, since he's come into this place in this arc. And, and now he's just sort of like a spectator watching uh, Lucifer wipe the floor with the captains. And like wondering why he's here. Like, like, like he knows. He knows this guy's strong. I mean this dude just, you know, Lucifer just single handedly took out all the captains, he took out freaking Asta for Christ's sake, and yeah, he's in this position where he's like, what am I doing here, like what am I good for, like we're gonna die, we're gonna die, and as we go further, of course we ended last chapter with you, uh, with you know, and uh, what's, her, what's her name, the fairy, <laughs> is it the fairy, it's a fairy isn't it, uh, the, the wind spirit and uh, Mimo Mimosa is it uh, arriving to save the day and uh, you know saved Austin's life and now uh, now he's got like this sort of dome shape uh, around uh, himself and Asta and Mimosa and Mimosa was basically trying to heal him and uh, he's trying to take on uh, Lucifer by himself at the moment but keep in mind this dude has like two Grimoire books at the moment and what like half of it like one one of it is like elf magic and that, so or star magic. So yeah, you know, good luck to him. Good luck to him. L yeah, Lucifer is not taking any crap from anyone at this point. Like he's literally telling him he want he want he wants Asta. He, his main target is Asta at this point. Like this dude cut his freaking horn off, and yeah, the detail is still there. Like I built the horn on the top is still missing. It is still there. And yeah, like he's just he's just trying to swat uh, you know where you know using his magic to basically teleport Mimosa and uh, Asta away to Seke, while well while he tries to damage Lucifer with his attack, and he's going into his spirit form and he gets behind him. He literally gets behind him, something that none of the other uh, captains could freaking do like they had to distract Lucifer to allow Oster the chance to get behind Lucifer this guy just does it like he teleports behind him with his little magic he's got his blade ready he strikes and nothing it doesn't do anything um, he can't cut him he can't cut him and he realizes at this point that the magic is very different and yeah but then what happens a Mero comes in Mero sweet beautiful hardcore badass Queenly Meryl comes in. Okay, yeah, I'm sipping for a character a lot here, guys, but what can I say? She's she's probably my favorite female character in this in this series. Like, she's awesome. She's freaking awesome. And she comes in, still all fire consumed, right? With Hellfire, if you will. I think that's what it's called, right? And punches this dude. And nothing. Still nothing. But here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. She's the only captain at the moment that's still standing, okay? Like, let that sink in. She's still the one standing. And even Lucifero's like, this wedge, her magic power is rising. Like, it's rising, okay? It's not dying down. Her magic is getting higher. Like, let that sink in. Like, what does that mean? What does that mean for her? Like, is this some Eskino type of shit? Like, like, like she's just gonna keep on fighting and, and, and it, it's just gonna keep going up and up and up until what the fire consumes her maybe? Is that what's gonna happen? Like, like, honestly, I'm loving the fact that her character out uh, all the other captains is the one that's still standing and fight. Like, it's great. Like, it's freaking great for her development as well. Especially when you consider the fact that, um, depending on what happens once this arc ends, we might end up with a new Wizard King. And, and I say that for the simple fact that, um, like few chapters ago, you know, I think when the demon or something was attacking 
or, or if this was like some other attack people literally saw Julius transform into his kid form okay at this point he can't hide it anymore like I think I think people literally saw yeah this guy is not like powerful anymore like the, 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 the wizard king we have now doesn't have any power we need a new wizard king so I'm thinking like after this arc ends we're gonna get some sort of election arc uh, some yeah some sort of political arc that's gonna deal with the repercussions of that and I'm, honestly, at this point, I'm thinking that the only person that would make sense to be the new Wizard King, or at least to temporarily take the role, would be Mero. Even if she doesn't freaking want it. You know, she's like, no, she doesn't want it. I, I imagine Julius would convince her, be like, okay, okay, be the Wizard King temporarily. Like, like just, just for a few months, maybe a year until we find someone uh, more qualified, or that wants to actually take the position. Uh, but, you know, none of the captains could do it, like, besides her. The reason I say this is, is pretty obvious. She's the only one who's still standing. This fight is going on, and she's the only one still standing, okay? The only exceptions are, are y Yami and, and uh, Vengeance, and they're not even there. Do you know what I mean they got kidnapped in the first place? They weren't strong enough to avoid getting freaking kidnapped. So, you know... You wouldn't, you wouldn't pick them realistically to be the, the next Wizard King, do you mean, like, considering what happened. Mero just makes the most bloody sense, and that's if she even survives this fight, which I hope to God she does, like, they better not kill her off. But yeah, we go back to the fight, we see that little demon uh, still there, like, watching this stuff, and yeah, like, like, oh my god. It, it, it's fun, like, Mira, what it is, I'm glad you've made it to the battlefield, brat number two. Like, she's acknowledging Yuno as well, and she's just going into, like, let's do this, and Yuno's like, yeah, and yeah, it's just both of them. You still see the injury that uh, Meryl still has on her arm, though, from where Lucifero gripped it, so I'm wondering if that's going to come into play, maybe. But, good God, the art design of her just covered in flames is just so freaking badass, like. And they're going in, and they're trying to just beat this guy. And you've got Seke just standing there like, like, I can move because of his magic. Don't know really why, maybe because it's like, sort of like elf magic, isn't it? It's somewhat elf magic, so I'm assuming healing elements there. But, uh, yeah, Seke, man, still being uh, the biggest disappointment. He's like, he's like, he's like to Mimosa, I'm going to protect you, let's get out of here. And, yeah. He can't understand why Mimosa is still standing there. She's all covered up in her little uh, flower bits. So the, the design here, like, it's freaking crazy, man. Like, I love it. But she's standing and she's trying to heal Asta. Like, that's her main job at the moment. And Seke, he can't get through his head why someone like this is wasting their time trying to heal this so-called nobody. And when, when, when all the other captains have pretty much been beaten. I have to say, uh, well, as we go through the chapter, right? Yeah, look, look at it. Why don't you put off the? Or why don't you put off healing him until after we run? After we run. I mean, to be fair, I, I I don't think he's literally saying leave Asta behind. Like you know, let's run away and then you can heal him. And then we get these little words from uh, Mimosa. Could you please sharp? Like it's great. It's like for the first time someone's literally telling this guy. I mean, it's not the first time. Other characters have pretty much threatened and and talked Seke off. But for Mimosa to pretty much like have that attitude, I think this is the first time we've really seen her go like really serious in terms of attitude. Um, I don't think I've ever seen her speak like that to someone, so I feel like this is a, maybe I'm, I'm misremembering. Again, I just sort of binged through the manga just a few weeks ago just to catch up, do you know what I mean? Uh, from where the anime left off. So I, I could be forgetting a lot, I, I pretty much know I've forgotten a lot of things already, but uh, it's just great. Could you please show up? Yeah, like. Shut the hell up, Seke. Like, everything that comes out of his mouth is just a lot of uh, BS, really. But, uh, yeah, we get this little thing. The truth is, I too wish I could flee with Asta-san right now, but that isn't what he wants. Asta is. So, I'm getting Sakura vibes from this. A lot of people will argue, Oh, no, why does this remind you of Sakura? This isn't Sakura. You're just being a complaining little uh, turd bag. It's like, no, this reminds me of Sakura. I'm sorry to say, but uh, reading this part in the chapter reminded me of uh, those moments where Sakura's like... Uh, Especially the part when she's trying to heal Naruto, really, and she's trying to keep him alive. And that's kind of what this reminds me of. Uh, but also, the whole, like, she wants to run away with him, it sort of reminds me of when, uh, when Sakura was, like, uh, sipping for Sasuke, like, during, like, important moments, right? And instead of focusing on those important moments, she's too focused on, I, wa I wanna... So where, where was I? Where did I end? Right, so yeah, I, I was reminded of this, of the Sakura moment from the uh, war arc when she's trying to save or heal Naruto's life as he's dying. 
pretty much sort of somewhat similar except you know they're not flying in the air but also the whole sipping for Sasuke that kind of what, what's reminding me of here but in this case it's Mimosa sipping for Asta I get it I get it she wants to run she wants to run away with him but in this case the situations are different I mean this guy you know he wouldn't want to run away he wants to stay and fight and help the captains and save everyone that he can Mimosa realizes this so you know she's not doing anything she wants to do something opposite but you know it, it's fine she's not and I'm not trying to compare our character to so I'm just saying this moment here reminds me of that I don't I don't know why people get so bitchy about comparing things like it's like oh you're, you're trying to be negative I'm not trying to be negative I'm just saying the the, the stuff that's happening right now reminds me of those moments here from from another manga like it happens, you know, you're gonna read something and it's gonna remind you of that. I mean, like the whole uh, Captain's versus a big powerful villain is literally stuff ripped from other manga stories. Like, it's not original, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't get why people get so um, antagonized when, when you compare it to something else. It's like, it's like, relax, relax. I'm not saying it's bad, Jesus Christ. But yeah, uh, yeah, Seke is just like we get we get a bit of backstory on Seke, and he's always been honestly. He's, I've I've uh, it's kind of weird with his character when you first meet his character, and you realize what kind of character he is. I didn't like him at first. Uh, as the series went on, obviously he did a few things that made me sort of like laugh at him and his stupidity really, uh, to the point where I was like, you know, he's decent. He's de he could be decent if he allowed himself to be decent, but he's got this arrogance. And we literally get this where he's leaving his hometown, like he, like he, you know, he he was always on top. He was the best, if you will. And uh, people were like, you know, you're awesome, you're great, you're gonna do bloody well. And he and he's telling everyone to go to their crappy lives, etc., etc. And he curses Asta. He curses him, like telling him that it's his fault that the sense of the day he met him, things just fell apart for him. But Asta, man, he's always been this sweet, nice guy. You like, like in this panel right here. You must have gotten stronger to have it made made it this far. Let's both do our best. Like he's always encouraging other people. He's never being negative or being hypocritical, like and looking down on other people. And as all of this is going on, you've got Mimosa trying to heal Asta, and she can't. Like, she even says, I don't have enough magic left, his recovery isn't going well. The spell broke, I can't heal him at all. Yeah, she can't do anything, and Asta gets up and he's like, thank you, Mimosa. He gets up, and he's bloody, he's injured. Great bloody artwork, by the way, like, this is incredible, like, great bloody artwork. Which I think I will use as my thumbnail, maybe? <laughs> Yeah, just just great, just really great. But she can't do anything. She can't, and she's like, yeah, you're not. She tells him straight up, you're in no condition to fight. And Asta's not hearing it. He's not hearing it because he's too focused to try and help, you know, and and stop Lucifero. And he's like, just wait a little, like. And he's 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 huffing for Christ's sake. He's huffing, like he's having breathing difficulties. And Mimosa is crying, like my voice can no longer reach him. Right now, the thing that's driving Asta is, and she's begging him, please, like, don't die. And uh, even Seke is, like, completely shocked, like, by, like, what he's doing. Like, he doesn't get it. He just doesn't get it. He's like, you're still a wreck. What do you think you're going to do out there? Huh? Not even all the... And he's right. None of the captains could beat this guy, with the exception of Meryl, maybe, because she's the one still standing for crying out loud. But like, and even, you know, Seke is just saying, what is the point of someone like you going over there? I mean, there's a lot of point. If you if you know Asta's character at this point, you know that uh, he, you know, he's the kind of character who never gives up no matter what. And the fact that he's got anti-magic means it's the, he's the only one who's potentially capable of hurting this freaking demon. Like, he has to go. It's it's not it's not a no-brainer. He's the only one who's capable, who's got a 50-50 chance of taking this dude down. Maybe even more, maybe not even 50-50, like, more more like 99%, like, he's got a chance, if they can get a good bloody hitting, to injure him enough that he, he, you know, either to kill him or to leave, like, and, yeah, and, like, Seke is just remembering all those moments where he was, like, talking down on everyone, and, and he's like, damn it, god damn it, all this time, why did I never try to become stronger, and he realises, we get this realisation from him, why, why did he go around just, Playing up being the big man when in all that time he should have been sitting down and training and trying to get stronger like Asta who was always training, who was always pushing himself, who was always trying to better himself and become better so people would acknowledge him. You know, Asta's reached that point where now the captains are finally acknowledging him 
and other captains, you know, when it comes to Seke, they're just they're just pissing on him, like, like, like the way Jack like always just threatens him, or the way Nacht and, and you know Nacht Nacht or technically Knight, you know, it translates to Knight, uh, told him, you know, like you know, die for us or, or something like that. So yeah, he he just comes to that realization at this point, and us is just like you know, you know the way the way you did, you know. And, and this is Seke's thoughts. Why, why, you know, why did I never try to construct the way you did? You know, we're still in, we're still in Seke's thoughts. And meanwhile, you know, Asta's like, you know, I'm on my way. And we get this another great panel, this face panel of Asta, and it's just freaking hell. The detail is just amazing. But yeah, this chapter was freaking. It was good. It was short, but it was good. We characters got their moments to shine. Seke finally realizes he's not all that. Okay, he is he is confronted by overwhelming, terrifying power, and and meanwhile the guy who should be the weakest out of everyone there is the one getting his ass up and trying, you know, going for the going into the fight. He's realizing now, like, yeah, like what's what does this mean for Seke's character development? It, it means two things. One, this either he's gonna die in this arc, and this is a big death flag, and he's gonna end up sacrificing himself to save Asta or someone else. Or when this arc ends, he's gonna get off his ass and he's gonna start training. Like he's gonna start training that like he's never trained before. He's probably gonna get Asta to help train him, or maybe he's gonna literally go up to Jack and he's gonna just start begging him, train me, like please, I'll do whatever it is. And we're gonna finally get a Seke who's gonna be very humble, who's gonna be very, uh, he's, who's gonna know humility, and he's gonna like help like he's gonna get to a point where he's gonna get decently strong and he's gonna develop some sort of magic that is gonna be very useful in the future and then with Amosa's character like you know just just the the kindness that she's showing here like she likes Asta maybe even loves him um, I think I think like is, is is more the term no 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 Noel no is the only one so far I think that's confessed her love or at least confessed to herself that she realizes that she loves Asta so far but um, it's just nice to see her in the action and trying to heal her. But her magic's gone. Like I said, the magic is gone. She can't really do anything. And it's not her fault. Like, they're drained out of their power at the moment. Like, they don't have the strength to go on. And she wants to stop him. She wants to. She wants to probably go up behind him, hug him, and hold him back. She can't do that because she realizes. And Asta, at this point, his focus is gone. I mean, you even look at him and you've got Leap on his shoulder there. Leap is just like slouching there like even he's knocked out like Leib's not awake he's unconscious as well um so yeah this uh the way this chapter ends it doesn't end in a positive way at all like this has got death flags everywhere like it'll be very interesting i mean i'm, I'm reading a lot of theories online people saying what if Asta dies and he goes to the underworld that is a pretty interesting concept actually you know what if he dies and the next arc we get is, is the is an underworld arc and maybe other characters try to save him, or maybe he, he does something and he escapes and his soul comes out. And then maybe it's some sort of time skip, maybe? I don't know, like, it'll be very interesting to see if something like that would happen, but, uh, I don't think so. I do think, I do think this fight is gonna end with at least Asta managing, uh, because I do think the Black Bulls are gonna come into this. The Black Bulls are gonna come in and help out to fight. Yami and Vengeance and Patri are gonna come in and help out to fight. Uh, they have to, I mean, they're in the freaking castle, right, at this point, like, where are they, like, what's going on, like, obviously they have to come in and help to fight, and help Asta specifically as well, and, well, I think, I think, I mean, I've said this before, but I think this fight is going to end with Lucifer getting injured, at least somewhat to the point where he has to leave, like, he has to run away, because if he stays, he's, he, you know, he, 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 there's more likely chance he's going to end up getting killed, or getting hurt more, so he has to leave, and tend to his wounds, but everyone else is going to be like, everyone, especially Arsenal's like injured this badly, like they're going to have to try and help heal him. So yeah. Um, and yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the next arc is going to be. But right at the moment, obviously, we're, this is the final battle for this arc clearly. But you know, it's a case of how much longer is this fight going to go on for. I think, I think so far we've been three chapters into it, three or four chapters. Uh, and it's been good so far. It's been it's been pretty bloody good because you want a good powerful villain. We need a good powerful villain after all the build up. So you know, I like it. I like it. But I do think it would help if someone did in fact die. Uh, I know a lot of people would disagree. Like, you know, you don't need to kill off a character just to. I feel like it, I feel like someone does need to die though. Someone from the good side needs to take a hit. Uh, it just becomes a question of who. And uh, you know, should it be Seke? 
Maybe, but like he's not important, do you know what I mean? Like maybe one of the captains, but even then it's like, should they? Or maybe, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see, it'll be interesting to see where this goes. But yeah, either way guys, that's my review and somewhat reaction for this chapter. Like, uh, I already read the chapter before, but I was just sort of skimming through it just to get an idea of what's going on. But uh, yeah, I, I liked it, very good chapter, and I can't wait for next week. You know, is it, the writer is Tabitha, right? He's uh, brilliant, you know, he's doing a brilliant bloody job here, like... I love it. I love it. I love it, guys. Anyway, remember to like and subscribe. And for the love of God, show your support for the anime as well, guys. Show your support. You know, we want that bad boy to come back in the future like bleaches. Okay? Take care and bye, guys.